Okay. Yay. So welcome everyone. This is so exciting. I just, before we get started, I think we have to give all of us, every single person in this meeting, a huge applause because we just survived the most insane, surreal, challenging year. Oh, so. <laughs> so yes, amazing job, everyone. And I just thought before we say goodbye to this year, which I think we all want to do as soon as possible, um, <laughs> we should just take this moment to share some of the things that actually were blessings in disguise, maybe silver linings or lessons we learned, some, some things that came out of this year that were maybe unexpected that we will actually keep doing next year, even if things are more normal in our, in our worlds. So um, I'm so happy to have with me here many members of our Conference in the Cloud team that the conference is happening July, the week of July 5th. I know a lot of you are planning to attend. Um, we'll share the link and more info later with you if you're not already planning to attend, but I feel so lucky to work with such incredible, incredible language teachers. And um, we had an amazing time last year and we're planning to um, have an, another awesome year this year as well. So, um, so I invited a bunch of people to come and share some takeaways from this year and some lessons and we'll then open up for questions feel free to use the chat too i personally can't focus on the chat and other things at the same time but i know viviana is here and it will help with the chat viviana your camera's off or i don't see you maybe it's okay but I want to see you if that's possible. <laughs> there she is. Yay, Viviana. And Viviana is going to share. Are you going to put in the chat the spreadsheet? Yes. So she had this great idea to make a spreadsheet that we can, um, people can put in, like when someone mentions a, an app or a program or something, we can just take notes of it right now in the spreadsheet. So at the end, you'll have this great resource with all the things that were mentioned and the links and everything from this. Woohoo. So good job. Baby, gracias. Okay, so let's see. I just, um, I want maybe just turn over to La Maestra Loca and then it'll be a little free form, people jumping in and sharing something. Um, but we'd love to hear you guys maybe just share what your situation was this year in school and, uh, you know, some key takeaway that you'll bring forward next year. So, yay. Yay. My greatest takeaway is that I hate pandemics. And I think that they should burn in that place, wherever that is, and that they're awful. They're awful. Um, my biggest takeaway is that I am so impressed with the resilience and strength of kids. Um, our kids did incredible things this year and were like resilient is the is the best word for it. Like flexible doesn't cover it. They were resilient. I had kids like attending Spanish class in the car while they're at the dentist, then back in the car, then back to home. And at first I was like, oh God, it's gonna be the car noise. And, and then I'm like, no, dang, this kid is still making class happen. Like they're literally managing life as a middle schooler and managing to show up and and participate and still like make this work i taught um most of the year was actually in person but we bounced back and forth so much because of having to quarantine because like i was the catalyst for the whole school having to shut down like because i taught all three grade levels and then coached all the grade levels at the school so like it was just that hot mess as far as having to go back and forth but the majority of the time was in person I was very lucky to be at a school um, that our hybrid was just, there were kids who were learning virtually and there were kids who were in person, but I never had to teach them simultaneously. So I had my virtual classes at a different time, but that was like not the case for I would say 80% of teachers that I spoke to. It was like the vast majority of you were doing that at the same time. So I can't speak to that, but I, I will say that I've just been, I was blown away by the resilience of our kids and also by the um, curiosity and courage of teachers. Um, because teachers, we had to learn so much this year and we like, I, I, 
I, and I'm alert. I am all about like, if there's a better way to do something, tell me I'm ready. I'm all in. Like I will learn it. But the amount I learned this year, I'm a freaking genius. I am amazing. I am. I can. I what the internet. I mean, technology. I am pretty much a whiz now, you know, but really all of us have had to go completely out of our comfort zones. If not like weekly, every day um, to push to make this work just to work. And most, most of the year I just got by, like I just did what I needed to, to survive. And that was okay. And I, I decided in October that that's the only way I would make it through. Um, and so as far as what I would keep, I think a lot of people are probably, I, I'm thinking immediately that Berta might want to talk on this as well, um, is social emotional learning. Um, I've, I've always done that. Um, but this year I made, I was like, well, no other teachers literally in my entire building have the time to do anything but cram content because their, their time was cut in half, but they were still expected to cover the same amount. So like their stress level was through the roof. And I'm like, nobody knows what's expected of me. I don't even know what's expected of me. So I'm just going to talk to the kids and a lot of, I have spent way more time in English than I ever have, but it was like, what do you need from me today? How are you today? It's okay to not be okay. I'm not okay either. Let's talk about that. Um, so the social emotional learning for me was so profound and so important and impactful that I think that for me, that's gonna be my biggest carryover. Like I am going to make sure that I focus way more on that um, because it's uh, the biggest, the number one things kid, kids focused on my end of the year survey this year like they said all the sweet things as usual, but I would say 70, 75% of them said something like, she checked on us every day. She asked me every day how I was doing and meant it. You know, like I was like, wow, almost every kid like really acknowledged the SEL work and, and needed it. So I really speak too long. Okay, jump in there y'all, let's go. Thank you, Maestra Loca. All right, somebody else. I will, I will jump in. Um, my, so I was teaching in person all year and um, my two takeaways, number one, um, you know, being in like rural Vermont in a pandemic, um, I, I guess it made me realize the opportunities that we have as language teachers to like take kids out of like the, the little worlds that they find themselves in find themselves in and like expose them to kind of I don't know all sorts of things and I I don't know I use it as an excuse I mean I mean I teach French and Spanish but I use it as an excuse to do like just to take them all over the world and um, I think the other thing as well um I'm really simple and I'm fine with that and I think during a pandemic like for me it was not it was not the the time just like learn like new things and like do like the new things like having getting emails how about doing this technology or this and I'm like no go like go away like I just so I ended up in my room just using things I had and I was amazed at like how like the kids were able to kind of use their imaginations and so we had a story that I created where or we created with this gal like takes out her flamethrower and she melts the iceberg and sa like saves the Titanic. She was back in time. And we did, we, we did this whole story just with the things I had at hand on like in my classroom. And the kids were so involved and like suddenly this chair became the Titanic and the, the, somebody else, another kid came in and was gonna move the chair and the little kids were like, like, don't touch the chair. That's like, that's the Titanic. It was also like in my little like classroom in rural Vermont, we're all masked up and we're all like kind of keeping distance, but like, let's face it, not really. Um, I don't know. Um, those are my things. Like, I guess it's also just taking it down to like what actually matters, you know, like I, rubrics this year, didn't do a single one, didn't get fired. It's fine. Like, like who cares? Like this, I don't know, life's too short. I'm done, bye. Awesome, gracias. Um, and just can we just acknowledge Meredith's amazing uh, gesturing during these? So thank oh, you. Oh, killing me. Life's too short. I'm done. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Donna Tatum her hand. Um, I'm Donna Tatum Johns. I'm a French teacher in Louisville, Kentucky. And we were primarily, well, 
we were primarily in person most of the year, but I did have virtual learners in every single one of my classes. And the biggest takeaway for me without repeating, like I can ditto almost everything everyone else has said, like keep it simple, but learn a lot, right? It was, that's the world I lived in and the Kurds were resilient. But my biggest takeaway that was on, when, on a day when I thought it was a bad teaching day, I'm not convinced it was as bad as I thought it was. And I had a student at the end of the year that, that brought that home for me because I wanted to quit. I told my husband, I said, I got to find another option. This is not what I want my life to look like. And if this continues next year, I'm a language teacher. You're covering up my mask. You're telling me to engage kids online. I can't play to two camps. So the young woman, a young woman that had been an online learner all year long, came in to take her final exam because that was required. So I got to see her and talk to her. And I basically started with, I am so sorry that I didn't do a better job. And she goes, what are you talking about? She said, you engaged me probably more than any of my teachers. And I went, what? I said, Nadia, I said, I'm not telling you this because I want any attention from you and I'm probably oversharing. I said, I wanted to quit. And she said, oh, Miss TJ, you can't quit. My brother's got to have you. And it just filled my heart. And then we hugged each other. And so I guess for me, the biggest takeaway is, on my worst day, maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. And I really can do more than I thought I was ever capable of in my life. I love Donna. I love yeah. I gotta agree. It's it's I had a I had a slightly similar situation with with kids that at the end of the year as they reflected, they said, You're the only one that from the moment they told us to stay home made us keep going, made us keep showing up. Yours was the only class I woke up for a lot of days. And I feel like, cause we knew you'd come for us. <laughs> so yeah, same thing, but gosh, and same situation. I had, I had kids in person and kids at home. I was mostly full remote the whole year, but I had a, a quarter of, of roomies and zoomies and it's enough to make you go insane. It's enough to make you you can be a really good remote teacher and you can be a really good in-person teacher, but you need an assistant to balance all of the insanity that can go wrong. Because when the tech drops, who do you go after? Do you let the class sit quietly doing nothing while you try to recover your tech? Or do you abandon your techs? And it's like, it's, is it a really big deal? Probably not. But for those of us who care about all of them, you don't know what the heck to let go of. And it's like I, so many days feeling like deer in the headlights because once again, my Wi-Fi dropped and oh gosh, they're not there. I, I have to go get them. We, we, you know, and it's um, super stressful. Um, so want to echo what Kevin said that keeping it super simple whether I was remote or I was in person and remote, like you don't need all the things to do everything you need to do. You don't like, I don't need this. I don't need that. Like I was the tech person in the school and I, and I knew it all, but you, I'd be a fool to try to use it all. And, and realizing that so many of the kids, I mean, we want to talk about equity, so many of these kids do not have the access to the tools that we want. They don't have the Wi-Fi. They don't have the tech to support it all. So trying to go to all these different places and asking them to do all the things was not a fair way to do the learning. And so like I pulled in a lot of stuff, but I, I also kept it. It was stuff that I used to share with them. And I think you know that's that's important to remember as 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 i go forward next year um i think the thing that saved me the most in class was that i used um i used word walls behind me to to talk to my kids so that i could you know 
if I needed to talk to somebody and, and point to a word or signal, like I had that for them and I could do that. So I think a lot of them that were like, what's going on? Because then again, they threw all the levels into all the classes because they couldn't figure out the schedule. I had to support everybody. So, so having this, I'm definitely going to use this next year. I'm going to use it whether I'm remote or in person. In person, this is, I don't need as many word walls because I can just flip between my slides now and have it posted on my board in front of me and right around it. So I, I have learned something that I'll use moving forward. Um, I think my other huge takeaway was that as we stared at the blank faces that did not want to participate with us online. <laughs> I know you probably didn't experience that and all of your students participated. However, I discovered that I need human interaction and, and the, the crickets, the silence of Zoom is a very painful, painful experience. And so when they wouldn't talk to me, I found friends. Stop it right now. I no. cannot breathe. I would help. Who her. is that? What All is the time. Name? Listen to me. And I would have conversations in Spanish with my friends. I have so many that it's almost, I need a 12 step program right now. I know, I can't, I can't tell you how many puppets I have that I use all the time. I can't, I can't. It's an addiction and I just, I can't even, all of my children are now afraid of Stuart Little because I have this little guy and he's always mean and they think Stuart Little's bad. But this is what made my life survivable in those crazy moments. And every story has a co-pilot. Every class has a co-pilot. I just think it's brilliant. I, I, I've used puppets my whole career and I didn't this year. I didn't even like, oh my God, it's so good. And you know, oh. and I gotta say that the, what happened was they were all like, what the heck is she doing? And it was like, it was even beyond crazy for me, the interaction that I had with the puppets that everyone, everybody wanted to talk to my puppets. And I was like, this is it. This is all it took. And they were all like wanting to talk to the puppets and like, what's the puppet going to do next? You need to get this puppet. I'm going to need, you know, so that I'm going to do that. The, the puppets are going to continue. I mean, I've always used them from time to time, but never leaned on them. But it was either talk to myself or talk to my puppet. And they really, while they got very salty with me, they got along with me overall. Um, and so that'll come back. And then I think my final thought is that as I walked away from my last day of school, I will never, ever stream and teach in person again. We all have to have boundaries and that will be my boundary. I will teach remotely or I will teach in person, but I will not do them both. Yeah. Yeah. Here's happens. what's super funny for me <clears throat> is because I'm just gonna bogart the conversation now. Yeah. Um, but I, as an elementary teacher, I a thousand percent rely on my freaking stuffies. Like I travel to some classes and I literally have a shopping cart. Like my mother bought me a shopping cart, like the two level. And I have one of those organizers on the side for like what's supposed to be for shoes. And I have like my my tiger and my sheep and like all this mini stuffies in my thing. So I travel with my stuffies. Alison, can I just point out, I'm a high school teacher and I rely on stuffies also, so. Okay, good, yay. Um, I love that. I but teach what's junior high. I teach junior high and I have um, a big box of stuffed animals as well. And one, one activity I did, I just had kids come in, pick an animal and then they just mm -hmm. named it. They named it, they talked about what it looked like they talked about where it lived, what it ate, and then kind of just, we did those for a few days and just, you know, I mean, we built off that. It's so, it's so great. It's totally what I rely on. But <clears throat> in COVID times, I was super hypersensitive about like, oh my God, who touches what? Like, do I have to like send it through the car wash afterwards? Because I don't even know. And so I kind of put that aside and I was like, I can't, I can't do stuffies. And for me this year, it was bananas 
challenging because the way we set it up in order to minimize the amount of contact that teachers had with students, I would see one grade level for an hour a day for two weeks. And then the music teacher would come in for an hour a day for two weeks and then the PE teacher. So I counted, I saw my sixth graders for 20 hours over the course of the entire year, 20 hours. I would normally get that in like two months. And it was so disheartening when I figured that out. But what was bananas was definitely <clears throat> thinking about what Annabelle said, where it was like connecting with kids in very different ways. And I have anxiety about going in next year and being like, I spoke so much English this year. Like, how am I going to deal with next year? And I have to let that go and be like, it was, it was, it was okay. It was what was necessary at the time. And I actually, my favorite week this entire year was when I substituted for an entire week in kindergarten. That's all I did. Like I did some French, but I was a freaking kindergarten teacher. And I connected with these kids in such amazing ways. And it was like, it was, and that's what I have to take away. It was like, it wasn't what I did in French, but it was how I connected with the kids. And like the very last day of school, this little kindergarten girl who was told by her um, parents that she needed to not bring her political views into the classroom, basically, because she's like, uh, like, ah, like I, ah. she doesn't filter and she's five and that's challenging for her future, whatever. But she said to me, she just blurted out in the middle of class. She was like, my parents think you're really cool. And I agree with them. And I was just like, I'm done. Like, I can't believe that. And that was one of the things where I just took it away. And I was just like, oh my God. But then from a language learning perspective, so like there, there are two different ways, sorry, Alyssa, cut me off if I'm rambling, but um, the, there was like that personal connection that I think a lot of us probably felt with kids in a very weird way that doesn't seem like it's what we should be doing, but it's what was needed at the time. And we have to accept that and have to kind of roll with that. But then, so the end of the year, instead of having one grade level for two weeks for an hour, I had them for one week and it's like, oh, that's perfect for language learning. Give them a little bit and then go for two months without anything. I was like, this is not, the music teacher and I were totally commiserating because music runs kind of the same way. But here was, here's what was bananas to me. And it makes me realize the power of what we do as CI teachers and acquisition driven instruction teachers. So I had five days with them. The first day I would introduce these look at games that I would play with them. And I'm sorry, I am a big fan of Gimkit, but look it blows Gimkit out of the freaking water. Out yeah, of the water. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I am going to do so for our conference. I'm going to do a night where like we play Blook It. And yes, they definitely bet that they definitely have different like roles, but I just had so much success with Blook It. And so I spent the first day like explaining tower defense. What does that look like? Factory. What does that look like? Like, and literally an hour with explaining the games. And then I had three days of basically like content and I did a clip chat with them and I used the, um, the black hole. If any of you ever have used the black hole clip chat, so good, amazing for like ethical dilemmas and moral, whatever <clears throat> spent three days with that. And then on Friday we would play look at games. I had two kids who were basically brand new to French, one of whom was like a, literally brand new. And the other had been in French for fifth grade, but their teacher last year was questionable. <clears throat> and I said to them, 
at the end of the class, I was like, you guys like won. Like you guys were the top scorers. And this one kid, this fifth grader was like, I don't know how I know this stuff, but I do. How do I know French? And then I threw another set of questions at them that wasn't anything that we had talked about. And he was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know. And so the fact that he was able to play this game and be successful after three days of content, and then another one was like a top scorer. And his mom said, yeah, I saw him playing games at home. I didn't really know like what, and, and I asked him and he was like, he could tell me what he understood. She was like, yeah, he knew what the questions were. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, look, it's great. But also whatever it was that I did in those three hours meant something and did something and they were successful. Sure, it's this super narrow path of like, this is what they know. And it's not this big global thing. But for me, it was like mad, crazy. I was like, sorry, damn. Like it was just, it was really powerful for me. And to to walk away and being like these kids saying, oh my God, I didn't really know that I sort of knew French, but anyway. So it was a crap year for me, a thousand percent, but I sort of walked away with these little highlights and it was just, it was, it was powerful for me. So we have to find those silver linings. We have to, they exist. They, and for me, it was this language piece, but also this like Oh my God, kindergartners like stick to me like burrs more than they ever have before. I'm like, y'all need to get away, like social distancing, like stop. But anyway, I'm done now, I promise. I just want to jump in before I forget the puppets thing that Amy brought up. And that's the only amazing thing. The only good thing about where masks this year are for puppets. Cause I was in person with my elementary kids all year and Shit. I had a puppet and a mask so they couldn't see my mask. It was awesome. That was the only good thing. Um, not good enough for me to wear a mask anymore, but really good. <laughs> I know. Hopefully I would never have to again, but that was one thing. Um, the other thing, just like a, a little something that surprised me was I started last year when we were remote doing one word images. Um, I won't go into that, but you can come to the conference if you don't know what the one word image is um, with the students using Canva, a graphic design program. So we would create the image on this program. And that was great. But then I had my kids in person this year and we actually still like we would create a character together in class and then I could create it on Canva. And also with stories, um, I didn't like, yeah, I didn't have all my props this year and I, all the things I used to think I needed. And so that was another takeaway is like, I really don't need the stuff that I used to think um, I needed with stories and, and props because I didn't obviously want the kids all touching the same things. But um, after every story, I would go home and like just make a little Canva uh, like graphic of the characters and the story. And the kids really, um, it was super engaging. And then write, put like um, the, you know, the reading on it. So they were getting the reading and seeing the graphics. And then they would often be like, we got into this whole thing with the characters and they'd be like, no, once, once they realized that I was choosing from different options of, um, you know, if someone was a dragon and I chose a dragon, once I realized that I, there was many choices, I'd be like, I don't like my dragon, but then we'd be like, you know, no le gusta su dragon, like, and then they would pick theirs that they liked. And it was just, a, I'm definitely gonna keep using that. And that was one, one thing that was helpful from this year. Someone else jump in or also Annabelle at some point, feel free to jump in and do a brain break to get everyone moving or something. Oh my God, let's do a brain break. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do my favorite. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, my favorite virtual brain break is go and get something that is not a hat that you will wear as a hat. Go and get something that is not a hat that you will wear as a hat. You have 10 seconds, go. I might have to go inside to go get something. Oh God. Go, go, hurry up, hurry. A 
found my daughter's shoe, but it had a lizard in it. So I hope there's not more. Oh my God, Michelle, look at Kevin. Yes. Okay, uh, all of you who are watching, turn your cameras on because I hope you did the brain break too. If you want to turn your cameras on. Oh yes, you did the brain break too. Look at y'all, fabulosos. Oh my gosh, amigues, this is amazing. Yes. Trina, you're really good at balancing. Holy guacamole. Melanie, what do you have? <laughs> Oh, so good. Sarah, that is huge. Oh, it's a pillow. What, is, what, is Aud what does Audrey have? Is that a crown? Um, I don't, yeah. Mm. Fab. Okay, look at John and Bertha twinning. So freaking cute. He had to lift the flap of the box to see that he was twinning with her though. That was pretty cute. Yes. Uh, is that a tiny teacup, Meredith? Tiny teacup? It's probably an espresso because that, yes, espresso. that's for you. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to take a screenshot so everyone uh, can see. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, now what I always tell my middle schoolers is go and put the item back. If you know you're not going to get mad at yourself for not putting it back, then don't. But I literally had parents email me this year saying, when you do that brain, when you do your brain breaks to go and get an item, could you please tell the children to put them back afterwards? It's like, oh, sorry, never thought that that would be a thing. Yes. Ooh. When they bring like animals to put on their head, that's my favorite. Berta, I want you to talk about some of your amazing SEL stuff and anything else you want to share. But like you were like such a, could you talk, please? I love you. Of course, okay. yes, yes. I was gonna jump in just now, actually, <laughs> but I'm always slow. I always said, should I go? Should I go? Uh, yeah, but no, absolutely. I I was going to share. Uh, well, first of all, um, my name is Berta Delgadillo, and I teach high school Spanish. And this past year, the first semester, I taught 100% virtual, uh, and then I had semester classes, and then with two preps. And then the second semester, I had three preps, AP Spanish being one of them. Uh, and uh, I also, I taught hybrid the second semester. So that was my scenario this past, uh, this past uh, year. And, you know, just like you guys, uh, I was able to do it. And, uh, you know, like Donna was saying, even what it seemed like the worst day at the end, students uh, showed uh, and shared that, you know, that, they, we really do make a difference in their lives every day. There's no doubt about that. Um, we don't, don't ever doubt that because they are, they know. And, and as Annabelle was talking about when she was mentioning social emotional learning, uh, students can tell. And in my school, it became a huge initiative and many teachers were doing it. And a couple of teachers were saying, um, I don't have time to do that because uh, I have a test and I understand where they're coming from. It was a stressful year for everybody. But my students would say things like, um, oh, we know who's doing it. We know who cares and we know who, who doesn't. Like they can read through that, especially high schoolers and middle schoolers too, actually. <laughs> so, um, and, but yes, most definitely uh, this year, we have always been, uh, always, I remember that I attended Annabelle's uh, workshops when I was first starting on my journey with acquisition driven instruction. And I remember she had um, a workshop title, making sure every student feels seen, heard, and understood, or something to that effect, Annabelle, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a couple of years ago. And it had such a profound difference in my practice because I had, uh, I always knew, we always know from year one as teachers that relationships are important and relationships matter. But you know, that year she took it to a whole other level and totally changed the way I perceive relationships in my classroom and which is what I do what I do now. And this year with social emotional learning, I just decided I was going to be more intentional. And I decided that I was going to go beyond just the check ins. And I know many of the people who, you know, may see me in my uh, Facebook community, or on Twitter, I have shared a couple of uh, social emotional learnings and the uh, social emotional checks. And I also started reading more about it. And I realized that, and, and I'm pretty sure some of you already know this, but 
for word languages is the easiest thing to integrate SEL into our practice. In anything you do, in a unit from beginning to end, you can embed it very easily. And, and the same does go for other subjects, but for us it's a little bit easier because we can talk about things that matter to our students and make it an SEL activity. For example, when it was April and it was physical activity month, we talked about how we take care of ourselves and we talked about uh, how many hours do we sleep and why do we sleep so few, well, they sleep so few hours and, and the importance of drinking water and uh, just having conversation and listening to the learners. And of course, I absolutely love Jamboard. As you guys know, it's my favorite platform. So I would say that the one thing that I'm taking away, of course, I am going to continue to further stu study social emotional learning. And if it's something that's new to you, there's a lot of research on Castle. Castle is the website to go. If you want to bring it to your um, admins, if you want to just kind of like get some people to sponsor your classroom or your SEL journey, just go get the research from Castle. And you can also read several other books. I ordered a couple of books of Amazon of how you can embed it into your practice. They're not language related, but they give me a lot of great ideas. And, and my students really also, and the end of the year, year survey that I did, which is the idea I also got from Annabelle, of course. Uh, and I, I, I made my own survey, but initial, the initial idea of doing a survey with intentionality, I got it from Annabelle many years ago. Um, so they, they said that, they, they said that it was just great to be able to not start class with a warm up activity with your, oh, let's get focused on class, but to talk about, to have a moment and that they also learn language along the way. They acquire language along the way because we would give them sentence sentence starters or you know just we just fed them the language so that we were able to to create language every morning with that so that's one and, thing and and bertha you're presenting on jamboard in the conference aren't you yes 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 okay so i am super excited and uh because you know i i absolutely love it and i'm gonna bring some ideas about how you can use it in your classroom because I am going to be back in the classroom. I also, just like Amy, I was feeling along the same lines and I literally, my boss would like run away from me because he's like, I already know what you're going to ask. And I asked him many times, are you sure we're going back to in person fully or online fully? Because I need to know so that I can sign this contract for next year. Uh, I, you know, but then again, you, anyhow, but I wanted to know uh, because I, none of us chose to do it this way. And if I can be honest, before I go into, you know, like this is what I'm taking away, it's the social emotional learning, but more than that, just being more personal with my students in the sense that um, this is something I talk about with Meredith that, you know, we have Jamboard and I know she absolutely loves Go Formative. And those two platforms, maybe you had a different platform, but for us, those two platforms allowed us to create more one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, feedback, one-on-one -on -one communication, even if it was not class-related, one-on-one -on -one praise. So I plan to continue to seek those avenues to provide that one-on-one -on -one connection. Because- and We have sessions on both of those, Go Formative <laughs> and Jamboard, from so, our two queens of the two things. Right? <laughs> So yes, uh, most definitely, they those platforms have been so powerful, you know, to just the tech with, um, with a purpose, with a purpose, and the purpose is to keep the students engaged, and but most of all to to maintain that connection because they're gonna be when they come back to us this year, they're gonna be craving that connection with their friends, with the instructors, and and everything. And that's one thing that my students did also say in the survey that one of their favorite things that they did in my class was to use Jamboard because they were able to see what their uh, classmates were thinking. And you may be thinking what they were thinking. Yeah, because we share everything on the jam, the whole class. I would put the whole class on the jam and then they were able to connect with their classmates. So I wanna, we, I know we already do this in a normal classroom without a pandemic or we have our connections and we walk over to our students 
and everything. But at the same time, I know that my feedback game totally, I stepped up my feedback game this year. Like, <laughs> yes, I, and I, I know Meredith agrees with me. So yes, I plan, I plan to continue on that. Now, on another note, one another takeaway, and then I'm just gonna be quiet, is that I also learned towards the end of this last second semester that I am going to put my mental health first over, over my work at school because, uh, and I'm gonna get help when I need it because towards the end of the second semester, I started feeling things I had never been feeling before. And, um, and it turns out I had anxiety and I had to go talk to a professional about it uh, because I had never experienced that. And being a person that has gone through so much and, and, and you know, I had never been physically affected to the point that, oh, I can't breathe or, or I just, uh, I'm always feeling weird and I can't, well, that's, you know, when you start having those feelings uh, because of this chronic stress at work, it's time to get help. And I am the kind of person that sometimes doesn't ask for help, but I've learned to ask for help and my lesson plans don't have to be turning on time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to be turning at all, actually, if my, if, because, you know, I'm going to put my mental health first. Uh, so, yes, so that those are my takeaways. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to hop on to Berta and say that one of my most inspiring moments of the conference last summer was when I popped into Berta and Claudia's AP, pre-AP Spanish class. And the students were practically crying at the end of the, in the fifth day of being together in that class and the community that they had created. And it was just so inspiring because I think so many teachers were at the conference wondering, how am I going to create community online? Like, that's not possible. And then to see after such a short time what both Bertha and Claudia had done with their students was so, so awesome. Thank you, Elisa. I do want to add that Claudia and I recently, well, in April, we did a AP uh, Spanish uh, camp for our learn for for learners who were going to take the AP test, and we had two of the students from the conference in the cloud this summer who came to our classes, and that was just the biggest. Uh, we were just so happy because, and and we had some. We reached out to some uh, others that we had uh, their emails, and they said, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I can't go because of this, but I would love to be there." But we had two, and they were, of course, the best students. So <laughs> it was amazing. I'm gonna put the link in the chat for the language classes for kids because we need students to sign up for a bunch of these classes have low enrollment, including the pre-AP Spanish. There's only like one student so far. So if anyone knows a kid who would enjoy doing this um, the week of July 5th, we would love it. And it's a sliding scale, um, starts at $25, but even if someone can't afford that, we can just invite them to come. So let us know, I'll put the link in the chat. But also I wanna pass over and hear from more people like Mr. Bracey. I was just gonna say, Mr. Bracey, I wanna hear from him. <laughs> oh, hey everybody, it's me. John Bracy. Hey, so so what what are the questions again? Do we ask we talk about what we're taking with us for next year? Yeah, what was your talk about whatever you want? And what are was there anything that like happened for you this year that you would want to continue next year? Oh, or yeah. what you're presenting on that is relevant to last year, this year, like oh totally yeah, joke too. We haven't heard any jokes. I'll time. throw I'll throw some stuff out there. Shout out to Morgan Bennett, who I think's in the house. Shout out. Yeah, if you don't know her, she's incredible. Morgan Bennett, throwing that out there. Yeah, so this year, what was I? I was remote, then I was hybrid, and then I was fully in person. Um, but the fully in person was also sort of hybrid. I don't know. I was a lot of different things this year. I couldn't keep it straight. We had like seven different schedules. I didn't know what was happening. But um, I don't know. I guess my biggest takeaway from this year more than anything else is, is take whatever amount of energy you put into teaching um, the year prior to the pandemic, take that amount of energy you put into teaching, I'd say divide that by half or maybe, maybe by four, take like a quarter of the amount of energy you're putting into teaching and keep that. Like after this year, like to me, the biggest lesson was like, we've been like we've been martyrs we've been the ones who are willing to jump out there 
spend our own money, spend our own time, emotional resources. We're the ones who are there for everybody. And then this year, the response to that was like, all right, awesome. Will you go die now for my own personal convenience? And so based on that as like the response, like, all right, like that made it so clear to me that like the balance was off that I needed to like that, that at the end of the day, these people are looking out for their own kids, their own families and whatnot. And they had more of a balance than we did. And so what I learned was that I need to not like break myself for this, like, because no one's breaking themselves for you in that same way. That doesn't mean don't be passionate, don't love what you do, don't attend all the professional development in the world. Hell, I'm spending the entire summer in professional development, basically. That doesn't mean you drop your passion. But uh, if, if you get home from work and you're thinking, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make like 30 pair decks, each one for like each block. And then like everybody's name is going to be on it. But then everyone's name is also going to be part of like a haiku. And that's going to be part of a pun. And that's going to be connected to, uh, we're just going to lead into a book. But then the book, we're going to take ants from the book. We're going to use the spreadsheet. We're going to put that into a Jamboard. And then in the Jamboard from there, we're going to link to a Go Formative. And from the Go Formative, that's going to bring us back to a Google form, which is in Google Classroom. And from there, we're going to do a meetup now. And then we're going to like, don't, don't do that. Like if you get home and you're tired, don't do anything. And so what I've learned big time is that you got to have a go-to set of tools that you can, that you can draw on when you got nothing. Cause like, you know, like this year we were operating on nothing and I would not have made it through this year at all. If I didn't have a, a, a laundry list of just zero prep activities, I mean, zero, I mean, nothing. I mean, I roll in at 7.30, I got no idea what I'm doing, not even the slightest. But I got a couple of go-to things. I'm like, all right, that's what I can do. I can pull that off. So that's what, I'm, that's what I would throw out there as my advice from this year. Do not break yourself. Do not be a martyr. Have balance. Do what you need to do. Longevity, longevity and survival is everything. Everything. So you're all amazing. I love you. Come to my sessions. I'll talk about something. I don't know. Making What am I talking about? I'm presenting on too many. I, I don't even know what I'm presenting on. Something good. Come to it. You're presenting on how amazing and awesome you are. Oh, we're doing, I thought someone else was doing that one. No, that's a hundred percent you, dude. Like it's all you. Okay. I'll do that, I guess. All right. Okay. I'm on. I want to jump on that for literally less than 20 seconds to say that um there are there are surveys around our country right now that shows um teachers have left the prof profession at a rate of between 30 and 40 percent and i want to say that i know that i know i had a couple say that they were still going to come tonight um or watch the stream and i think that it's so important to say like we get that like you just heard so many of us at the beginning of this say, I, I mean, I was ready to work at a coffee shop. I, Paul was supportive of me, like 100% supportive of me. Um, but it's okay if you didn't make it through this year too, um, because there, there were some situations in some schools where it was just not sustainable. And if you got out because you were doing what Berta said and taking care of your own mental health. Um, I'm proud of you too. And we see you and we, we get it. All of us get that too. So I just want to say that really quick. Okay. Somebody's next. Who's next? Meredith, go get more champagne. Milan, <laughs> Michelle, who haven't we had a <laughs> Drank it all. Um, John, I want to add, literally drank it all. Uh, my husband said yesterday, he was like, you sure you still want to work? I was like, no, like it's totally not financially an option, but he threw it out there as if it were. And I was like, man, that's, it. I mean, all of just like piggybacking on what John said. And I, and actually his, um, I should have made my background, the picture of you, John, <laughs> it's you looking at Amy, looking at like somebody else. Anyway, amazing. I didn't even, dang it. I came unprepared. Um, but my, my thing to keep, I think is also, something I would have kept before, but and it's going to sound super cliche, like teamwork, but I mean that on two different levels. I mean it locally, because I have an incredible department where you could go, you could walk in and just, it was Eric Herman. Yes, Amy, thank you. It's all four of your, it's like a whole, just a, like a, yeah, it's a whole bunch of faces. And then mine. Um, I could walk into work in my incredible department and say, I don't know what I'm doing today. 
Like, can somebody send me a clone link for a go formative and make it something remotely? What we've great. Thanks. And my team would be like, boop, boop, boop. We got you. It's on teams quick, assign it to your class. Like it was no harm, no shame, no blame, whatever. And my colleague uh, was breaking up a cat fight between her two cats and like stepped on her foot funny and like broke her foot. <laughs> like literally a thing that happened and so she's like <laughs> like scream crying on the phone 10 minutes before the bell rings like <laughs> i gotta be gone and we were like we got you it's not i mean it's annoying but like it's not a thing i'll take your six kids zoom is canceled due to lack of interest it's not a big deal like goodbye whatever and we already had a really strong team but i think in languages what we don't talk about enough is how broken that relationship can get like vertically, when you're aligning vertically and horizontally and all the ways, language teaching is so personal. Um, and I'm so thankful for my team. And I, like we had so much money in the bank figuratively that this year when we were all withdrawing every single day, like, girl, I got nothing. You got to talk me off the ledge because I'm about to lose it. Um, and I also mean teamwork in a bigger level, just like joining Lang Chats, being on webinars. Um, like Kathy just said, like the online communities that we've created when I tell you queens and kings like who are on this call right now, we're going, no, I literally don't have any lesson plans. And I and, the, and my kids don't wear the mask. I was like, oh, thank you. Like I felt so much better because so much of my teacher identity was wrapped up into never sitting, never doing. I had a lot of always and never statements. I always do this. I never do this. And suddenly I couldn't do any of those things. Um, and that was really depressing for me. Like. Um, like Berta, like you were saying, like, I felt like the walls were closing in. And then you've got these bigger things where like dumb stuff is blowing up. Like suddenly, uh, like, you know, you've got like a tweet coming at you and then somebody and da -da 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 -da, and you're like, pew, pew, like trying to avoid just all of the BS. Like it was just a lot of chaos this year. And I was really thankful for a lot of communities, both like teamwork, both online, but also like locally. Um, and I think also the boundaries. So maybe mine's two keeps. Um, are we allowed to do two keeps? I'm doing two keeps. The other thing was boundaries. Like John said, no one's signing up for our job, period. Like, why have I ever been worried about getting fired? Like, I literally would be like, ooh, 705. I'm walking in with the latte that made me late. And like, we start at 710. Like, we're 710 to 210. This year, I had like sunglasses and like a wheelie suitcase. And I'm walking in like, say something to me right now. Oh, like I dare you. And I was walking in next to my assistant principal like every time and he's like, oh, good morning, awkwardly. And I was like, mm-hmm, say something to me. Double dog dare you. Like, cause you're not, cause we're all just doing the best we can. And we were just like eh, part ways because why have I ever been worried? This experience changed zero people's behavior. Those of us who work hard, worked hard and we worked our butts off and we kept working and then we felt this big so we worked harder and that didn't help and so then we said well screw it and then we got really good boundaries it was great it was a great progression and those who have always done sit down shut up do this packet don't bother me just made it like a digital packet with cami and then moved on you know like that, they just like found preview on their mac and we're like look kids you could edit it Boop, like workers are gonna work lazies are gonna laze and I really hadn't internalized that in ways that made me go like, you don't have to do everything. Like, you know that, right? Um, and I'm really thankful. I'm really thankful for that because I, I slowed down. I feel like we did more this year. Like we connected in ways because it's more convenient now with this, but there was some, there was some slowing down in a big way, which was, I, I'm not gonna not go back to, if that makes sense. I'm totally keeping that. I'm keeping the teamwork. I'm thankful for my team and like continuing to keep those relationships. And I'm also thankful for um, just having, like John said, a stronger sense of if it's not serving me, I'm not doing it. And I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm going to lose zero sleep over thinking I need to do more, be more, get, mm -mm. no. Because I think what we've realized is that it's not that we're undervalued, we're unvalued. Yeah. And guess what? They can't do it without us. Yeah. They need us a lot more than we need them. And I know that sounds ugly, but I don't care. Like I love kids and supported teachers support their students. So when we're supported, like we can do right by kids. And I feel 0% bad about defining what that means for me from here on out and, and living by that. 
I know we're going to wind it up soon, let people go on with their evenings, but I want to hear, I know. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 hang on. John, can we just take a moment to appreciate? John, you nailed it. John, yeah. a beautiful lady behind mm -hmm. you. Have you got company? Yeah. What is that? She, the, the, the pinky? She's lovely. What am I doing? Just... <laughs> Where's my tiny anyway. espresso cup? <laughs> Nice. So yes, well, we didn't thing I've that. ever seen in my life. Sorry, couldn't let that go unnoticed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very important. Yes. Um, I just know if I want to give space if Milan, you've been patiently there, Michelle, um, seeing who else hasn't, if Viviana wants to share anything just in the last moments together, and then we'll we'll let everyone well, and also questions too. Sure. I can jump in really quickly. Uh, it's been so good just getting a chance to hear everybody. My name is Nalan Taylor, guys. I'm in Louisiana, teach high school uh, Spanish and also a technology lead teacher. Uh, this past year has been, I guess, a doozy. I mean, for everybody. I think the thing that I've taken away the most right now, that picture, Amy, is hilarious. <laughs> so <laughs> ah, let me come back. That's like... <laughs> the whole thing in a class session like what <laughs> so <laughs> what i'm taking away this go around i'm so glad that um really love my ass that i had to take it away and about just put the same thing it's so under this guys i cannot concentrate and say what i need to say to wrap this bad boy up. <laughs> look at it all the background change okay so what i have taken away this go around basically is that we need to be able to normalize and i know that word has been gone out there much but normalize the way that we are feeling and vocalizing it i feel like this year uh we've had a lot going on within just my school district itself not knowing if we're going to come back as a school district because the school district is for whatever reason millions of dollars in debt so how does that even happen so do we even have jobs next year so the thing is I think I've probably spoken at more school board meetings as an advocate for my colleagues and for my students this year than I've done for the past 13 years that I've been teaching, you know. Um, but one of the things that I think I will take away this go around is just being consistent and being firm in what it is that I know to do. So because I said that my thing is technology and because I have to, well, not have to, but I enjoy introducing it everywhere that I go with my students, with staff, with global PLN, with whomever. And I get it that, you know, sometimes, hey dude, just do what you can do. But what I do is technology. So sometimes I kind of just throw myself into that with my students and things that we're going to develop. So that was like one of the saving graces that we have for the classroom. We were a Microsoft school, my Microsoft district, and um, everything that we use, the class notebook and teams and ways to communicate video chat with each other. All of those things, in addition to all of the other tech stuff that we kind of just threw in there, were ways that all of us were able to keep the peace, so to speak, and to have a safe space in our classroom and even outside of class for us to be able to communicate. So what I what I knew to do and what my students knew to do was to be consistent. They knew that coming into our classroom, it was going to be something that was, hey, this is what we're doing. And if we're not doing whatever I got on that game plan today, you know where to find it. If you're stuck with something or, you know, you don't feel like doing nothing at all, hey, dude, we all got a choice to make. All of us are making decisions. So the part that I was saying before, just about normalizing whatever it is that is going on, Keep it real within your students too, because a lot of times it was hard to find something that was positive that was happening. But I knew that if I maintain what it is that I was doing, regardless of the situation, I had to let them know that, hey, I'm in the same boat with you. We don't like what's going on. We hybrid right now. We've been hybrid this entire time. It's tough for me as a teacher to be with you guys in person and then to have them online. You guys are feeling like you slighted because you're not in the classroom with me. You want to be with your peers too. Some people want to keep a mask on. Y'all talking about taking these breaks. Hey, we all got a decision to be able to make. So my positive attitude, your positive attitude, we vibe off of each other. I need you just as much as you need me and in order for us to succeed and have the best type of school year that we can have for us. We're going to have to work together. And this is what we do. So every day was just like a strap up your bootstraps and uh, let's get to work. And that's for technology because you're going to speak to Spanish today and you're going to use this tool. <laughs> That's it. Okay, thank you. I don't know, Michelle, you want to chime in? 
Well, after Nilan, that is a pretty inspiring talk. Um, the only thing, I mean, there's so much that resonates with me from what everybody has said. And um, I, I think that the main thing that I, I don't really know how to deal with it, but exactly, but I've been working on it is uh, what happened at the end of the school year when um, I had some parents of, well, I, you know, a lot of parents were able to watch what was going on in my classroom for the first time. You know, they could see exactly what was happening and they could see how their kids were responding. And I had this, uh, a couple of families who said, oh, you know, and these are families of kids who are like absolutely great and their families are Spanish speakers. So some of you know that I am not a very able Spanish speaker and here I am teaching Spanish. And it's pretty funny sometimes. And here I am with the, the Spanish speaking family, first language, sitting behind the kid, listening to what I'm doing. And I am just dying because I forgot how to say something like dress or, you know, just, or anyway. And these parents came up to me and they're like, well, our kid needs to know, um, would you work with our kids over summer? Because they don't know as much Spanish as these other kids. I'm like, no, no, they, <laughs> it's really okay. So I really want to, um, work harder on how I educate parents, except I'm not, I don't want to work harder. I'm asking all sorts of people. I've asked like five people. Uh, I need what you, what you do for your levels, but I really want to be transparent with parents what to expect when kids are watching. Like when your little kid is smiling and laughing at a story that I am telling, that is a whole lot of comprehension going on. And you do not need to worry that your kid is not acquiring Spanish. She's already living with you for God's sake. But anyway, that's about it. And that's just kind of a funny thing to be thinking about. So um, I really, and then I'm sorry, one last thing. One thing I really don't want to have to leave behind, but I don't know how to do it teaching, you know, back in school and all my online Russian and stuff. I don't know how to be in connection with all these wonderful people because that is one of the most wonderful things that has happened because of this pandemic that I actually got to see you guys a lot and I ordinarily wouldn't. So love y'all. I think, I think that online PD is going to stick around though. Like, I, I think that that's been something like I miss the in-person conferences and I can't wait to hug everybody because I'm a hugger and I'm like so excited to like see my people in person. However, I really do think that um, virtual uh, PD will remain a thing because it has made it accessible to so many who wouldn't be able to ever attend an in-person conference. And I think that um, that piece uh, truly around equity um, and access for people will will remain. Um, I, I think that I, I at least I hope it will. And conference in the cloud, I mean, it rocked last year. It's gonna rock this year, so might as well just plan on next year too. Sorry, Alyssa, I have no idea if I was allowed to say that or not. But I just, cloud, it's all about the cloud. Like we. I love it. I'm sorry. I wanted to say that I actually was checking into a conference that has nothing to do with teaching. And I love how they advertise it. They, uh, they were saying, you can buy the virtual packet or you can buy the in-person packet. So the conference is going to be in person. Mm -hmm. But if you can drive to Atlanta, it's not AATSP, it's not a teaching conference, it's something else. And you can, uh, they're going to film the whole, all the sessions. I don't know the logistics of that. And you're going to be able to watch the conference live if you buy the virtual packet. And if you can't be there uh, live in person or virtually, they're going to send you the recording. So they have like different price packages. So, you know, it's possible. It's possible. So I know that Donna has to leave in a second and some other people do too. So if she disappears, we love you, Donna. And thank you so much for coming. Um, and Vivi wants to jump in and say something, I think. Dun, dun, dun. She's muted. There she is. Yeah. Oh, there I am. Okay. Um, I would say that I've never had a problem telling people no. So when I needed to say no, it was fine. But what I learned this past year was prioritizing things that actually bring me joy. Um, and 
Did you lose me? Hold on. Am I there? Oh, maybe we lost her. Did you lose me? No, you're back. Okay. So I prioritize doing things that bring me joy because I realize I don't want to wait 20 years when I retire to do something that brings me joy. What if I don't have 20 years, you know? And so I just started doing the things that, that bring me joy. And I've been prioritizing, um, you know, spending time with my family, um, reading my Bible, working in my garden, curating my seed collection. I bought myself 30 dresses this year. I never ever buy stuff for myself because I'm such a martyr. I'm like, no, we can't afford that. I'll just use what I have. It's wasteful to get more stuff. And nope, I was completely selfish and, and it was delightful and wonderful. And I recommend it to everybody who can afford to be a tiny bit selfish. And that's it. Yay. <laughs> Prioritize joy. Well, this has been so fun to see everyone. It makes me even more excited for the conference. Um, and th I'm so grateful to work with this awesome, awesome crew. And there's so many other people who couldn't make it tonight. I can't wait to see them in a couple of weeks. Um, if anyone can stick around for a little while, we can answer some questions and then, and then say, say good evening. And, and if you're comfortable turning your camera on, knowing that we're still streaming and recording, you are welcome to turn.